Welcome to worship this Ascension Sunday. Please refer to the bulletin for important announcements about our Memorial Day festivities and our Lyft Youth Group Car Wash and Corny Bingo. Today we pray for Dorothy Sandridge, Jackie Lynn, Ryder Nettle, Karen Blitch, Calvin Rausch, Mary Billig, Marvin Jim Gilmer, Alfred Dittman, Elliot Geib, Neil Oberly, Paul Wagner, Dennis Wayne, Juliet Haig, Dale Gaiman, Missy Maroney, Dennis Bauscher, Mitch Burkhart, Deb Steffi, Tyler Roof, Glenn Dean Faust, Glenn Jacoby, Claire Miller, Missy and Brian Boyer, Oscar Miller, Dustin Anderson, Herb Gebley, Glenda Gaiman, Joel Bishop, Larry Phillips, Shirley Felix, Kyle Kunkel, Cynthia Putt, Martha Dodrell, Donna Rupel, Frank Saracini, Richard Jennings, Steve Smith, Harold Spatz, Harold Sunday, Barry Dreisbach, Bev Blatt, Lynn Rentschler, Neil Yoder, Wayne and Arlene Hoffert, Dennis Linderman, Joey Stump, and Marvin Norecker. To worship this Ascension Day Sunday, a couple of announcements. One is um, Karen. We, we, but first of all, we kind of, we kind of thank Karen Harley for putting together um, another great sandwich sale. Not the, yay! Now, but 
Karen Harley did not do this alone. She had so many helpers organizing and then also uh, selling and putting the sandwiches together. I mean, we maybe had, I don't know, I don't know if anybody took a count, 20 people showed up, uh, um, I don't know, to, to put together the sandwiches. And we got to thank everybody who helped uh, make all those Italian sandwiches and uh, ham and turkey. Thank you, volunteers that made the sandwiches. All right. Um, the other thing is, uh, obviously, we've, we've all heard about the, le the most recent CDC rulings about masks and such. Um, again, you know, this is always like a moving target. You never know what they're going to say, right, and when they're going to say it. So I imagine we have a board meeting tomorrow, and we'll, I'm sure we'll be, we'll be talking about uh, our mask use going forward. Uh, just be patient as we figure out the way forward uh, from, from here on. Always knowing that the CDC is always giving us new information. So it always has to be something we keep on updating. Um, now we have one more announcement from uh, Nikhailin and Adriana. We're going to come forward to talk about some lift activities. from June 14th to 18th. Our retreat theme will be the future, and we will be also doing some mission trip work at the Naval Air Station Museum, only a few miles from the Luther Inn, where we will be staying. We thank everyone who was involved in last week's sandwich sale. We appreciate that a portion of the profit from the sale will go towards our retreat expenses. To cover more of our costs, we are holding two fundraisers. On June 6th, af excuse me, after worship, come to our car wash and bake sale. Washing your car will cost you $6 unless you buy a car wash ticket from a Lyft member, which will be $5. Good morning. Good morning. On June 2nd, we will be sponsoring Corny Bingo. We are calling it Corny Bingo because we'll be using corn kernels for number markers. We're also thinking of other ways to incorporate corn into the bingo theme. Details about bingo are, are in the bulletin and you can sign up to play on the enclosed slip of paper in the bulletin. There's a basket in the narthex for your slip of paper. We are also collecting prizes for the bingo. There is a bin in the narthex for the collection. Pri prizes, well, excuse me, prizes can now, <laughs> oh my gosh, prizes can be new or used and of nominal co cost, no more than $10 in value. Hope you can come out for the fun evening of bingo. Thank you. Any other announcements? Then let's begin worship. Crown here with many crowns. The Lamb upon his
worship, people of God. For our God, the Most High, is seated on the Holy Throne. Our God is sovereign over all the earth. Let's worship God together. While we claim to celebrate the ascension of our Lord, the way we live proclaims our lack of faith. In his power to deal with the world, let us confess the incongruity between our faith and practice. God of mercy, we come on this day, Lord, to confess our lack of trust. While we sing in your lordship over all creation, we have too often acted as though you are powerless in the face of today's events. Help us to live with confidence in your presence today and to hope that we might like be forever. Our Lord God has ascended on high. His mercy and compassion reigns over all creation. With him, you and I have forgiveness of our sins. Give thanks to the Lord, for his mercy endures forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. The peace of the risen Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God, your only Son, was taken into the heavens and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world, and in the end, bring everything into your glory through Jesus, our sovereign Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for today is taken from Acts, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. In the book of Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. <laughs> this, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them, they said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Let us read responsively Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. The Lord the most high is awesome, the great king over all the earth. 
He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He shows our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God is King. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. The second reading for this morning is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, beginning with the 15th verse. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority, and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understanding the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord.
I'm sure you've seen a balloon rise up into the sky. Maybe you were at a balloon launch. Or maybe you were holding a helium balloon and it got away from you. Or you wanted to let it go. Because don't we just stare up at that balloon as it begins to drift south, then east? It's over the trees now, or above the neighbor's house. And the vision of the balloon becomes tinier and tinier until it becomes a speck and eventually disappears. And we find this fun and fascinating. Perhaps we've stared upward at airplanes. Or at night, we've stared up at shooting stars. Or we've looked for a constellation or a planet Jupiter or something. In fact, I guess last night, unless they scrubbed it again, there was a rocket launch from Wallop Island, Wallops Island, and it could be seen over our houses if we looked out at about 8 o'clock last night. Now, I want all of you to look up right now. Look up. Look. What do you see? Ceiling tiles, lights, fans. But what you don't see are the same things that you don't see when staring at a balloon or Jesus ascending into heaven. All kinds of things could be happening around you while you're looking up at the ceiling, while you're concentrating on the ceiling and the spinning of the fan blades. Someone could have stolen your purse or placed a stack of $100 bills next to you. Not likely, right? You don't see people when you're staring at the ceiling. The person sitting next to you could have skedaddled out the front door. Someone new could have taken that person's place. You might be sitting next to a clown. No comments about your neighbors, right? Or some guy dressed in a dinosaur costume. You'll never know until you drop your gaze. If all we ever did was stare upward, we have a pretty lonely existence and without a lot of activity or purpose. If all we did was start walking while staring upward, eventually we'd fall down the stairs or walk into traffic. Staring upward is, is almost like you're wearing a blindfold. Which is the point of the angels in the gospel, what the angels were trying to say to the people gathering, watching the ascension. You are not going to be able to do what you're supposed to do just staring up at a tiny Jesus First of all, you have commitments. The people there, they had families, spouses, children, elderly parents, and they had jobs. They had friends and hobbies. They had houses and property to maintain. Many were farmers or had livestock. Try cooking supper staring upward. Try being a shepherd looking at the clouds. Try being a follower of Jesus with your eyes affixed 
on the heavens. Not that Jesus did not look to God for guidance. Of course he did. But when we are doing his work, sorry, when he was doing his work, he was looking into the eyes of those that he preached to. Into the eyes of the sick. Not up at the sky. Into the eyes of the sick that he healed. Into the eyes of the people he handed that fish and bread to. Not up at the sky. Into the eyes of the disciples and Mary and Martha and Zacchaeus and Lazarus and Joseph of Arimathea and all the other people he had contact with. It was not about waiting for something to happen or to come down from the heavens. It was about looking at people, looking at people to see their joys and their pains and their needs and their fears and doing something about it. We need to look someone in the eyes to heal them body, or soul. It is easy to ignore the plight of people by looking upward. Or perhaps it's not ignoring, but just hoping that the help needed will come from on high instead of through our hands and our hearts. Those people watching Jesus rise were the ones that set their gaze like flint to build the church from scratch. So they did not keep looking up. They looked ahead. They looked forward to build the church from scratch. Thank God they saw the light in the eyes of both Jews and Greeks who embraced the gospel and started this thing that we call Christianity, this thing about praising the Lord, that doesn't mean that we never should be looking up to the heavens. It's appropriate to do when needed. And Lauren Daigle shared this in her, in her song. Where are you now when darkness seems to win? Where are you now when the world is crumbling? Oh, I hear you say, I hear you say, look up, child. Look up, child. Where are you now when all I feel is doubt? But where are you now when I can't figure it out? Oh, I hear you say, I hear you say, look up, child. It's not simply look up to the heavens, for God is present, for Jesus will guide us. That's part of it, looking up in prayer. There's also to look up in hope. Look up in the strength of the Lord. Look up, child, finds Lauren Daigle drawing on the innocence and purity of childhood to help her maintain a passion for life. Look up, child, is shorthand for you have nothing to worry about. I am in control. Just fix your eyes on me as we read in Hebrews 12, 2. And Daigle says herself, there are so many things in life as adults we get completely overwhelmed by. There's new pressures. You take on opinions of others, we become labeled. And it gets really difficult the older we get. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to live like that. 
I want to be carefree and wild. Carefree and wild have many connotations, some good and some bad. But with this singer, she meant being wild in the Lord. Did you know that it is possible and even biblical to live a carefree life? A life devoid of worry and anxiety. A life of absolute peace and joy in every situation you face. It is possible but only by faith. God wouldn't tell us not to worry or fret unless it was possible. The first thing we have to do is pray about everything. Does God really want us to pray about everything? You bet he does. He tells us to pray without ceasing. The reason he wants us to pray about everything is that it helps us to always be God-focused. Isn't it easy to try to figure out everything on our own? Believe God out of it? But that's not really the best way to live. God wants us to come to him for general advice and his advice is always good. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. It says in Proverbs. There is something that you're going to need some help with. Maybe you're facing something today that you've never faced before. Maybe you're facing something that is very unique to you. So instead of taking on the burden of, of, of or, or the concern yourself, share it with the Lord. Share it in prayer. But also remember that you are not supposed to try to live life alone. Jesus is there to help you carry anything that comes your way. Matthew 11. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Please rise. In response to hearing God's word for us, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. We call the whole church on earth to worship and bless you. Empower your church to be joyful witness to your love made known in Jesus Christ, Lord, in your mercy. You have fashioned a habitat for all your creatures, and you fill the earth with your glory. Give rain where is needed, and rescue those inundated with flood. Mend what we have torn in the fabric of creation, and replenish and nourish your world. Lord, in your mercy. In the majesty of your love, you rule the world with justice and mercy. Give those in authority the spirit of your love, so that all who are hungry and poor receive food and resources. And all people flourish and live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. You heal those who are sick and bind up the brokenhearted, especially those we name in our bulletin today and in our hearts now. Attend to the cares and needs of the hurting and hopeless in our congregation, community, workplaces, schools, and families. Lord, in your mercy. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. Merciful God, that you give, we give thanks to you for the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, who in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with all the witnesses of the resurrection, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Thanksgiving, we remembered in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. In confidence, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.
of the body of Christ, broken for you. And take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks for the living bread from heaven given to us this day. We ask that you speak through us and move through us, that the story of your love will be known in our time and place. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. People of God, let's not just stand here gazing into heaven as the disciples did after they saw Jesus leave. Instead, let's take up the mission Jesus left us to be his witnesses, to tell everyone we meet who Jesus is and how he has changed us. And may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit Go with us all. Thank you.